Hey folks, I'm in Tennessee today with Russ. How's it going guys? And there's Cody and we're, uh, I don't say we're breaking camp. You guys are, are going to stay here throughout the dura duration, right? We yes, are. we are. Yeah. So, it's going to get cold too. <laughs> we're, we're doing some uh, pre-fishing for the Kayak Bass Fishing National Championship. And before we get into to too much, I need to address what happened to your eye, man. You know, there's a lot of water here Let's at the. the uh, it's a lot of water at the national championship yeah. this year. Yeah. Um, a lot of access I haven't ever seen before, and um, we were exploring some kind of steeper, steeper cliffs to get some kayaks down to a river. And um, I, just, you know, took one slip, one wrong slip with the Crocs, and uh, one ended up at the top of the hill, and one ended up down in the river. And oh, my phone no. was somewhere in between, and I was all beat up too. Um, but we did a 20 mile float the next morning, you know, she kind of woke up with a little swollen eye and we made it work. So yeah. tell me it was worth it. It was worth it the next day for sure. Oh. Yeah, I don't know, that night before, I don't know what I was thinking completely, but it was definitely work it, worth like it when we right. finished. It was like a 25 was foot yeah. drop. I'm not like tumbling down a 25 foot cliff. Like, <laughs> Are you still seeing it? Like playing slow mo. Yeah, I'm not kidding. It scared me. I don't know about Russ it. Russ has like different levels of worries in his voice. I heard the Cody, Cody. I, I thought I was down nine. One. I already had the nine one pressed on my phone. <laughs> that was scary. Right. So you guys already have how many days of pre-fishing in? A lot. A lot. Maybe six. <laughs> I'll He's got have several more, more like at least game. ten. I've been. I yeah. just went all out on this one. It's close to my house. I live about an hour and a half from here. I'm familiar with a lot of these waters, and with them opening up the boundaries, uh, there's a lot of a lot of rivers and a lot of water that that I'm I'm really familiar with, and I, I love fishing. I do guide trips on a lot of this these areas and stuff. So uh, I've been fishing some of the familiar stretches. And what's cool about this tournament is it's really uh, pushed me to 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 dissect everything and, and uh, leave no stone left unturned and I found some some new water um, that we had to yeah push ourselves like going down <laughs> cliffs and really you know really pushing ourselves but it, it's been worth it we've been catching some good fish so we'll get into a little bit but like I, I, I don't want to call it controversy but it's there's different levels at different you know KBF BASS Hobie BOS like they all have different rules on how far you can push upstream into a river and we're going to get into that a little bit today and i think that's some of what we're yeah we're yeah. making sure that that's good. if if you're going to choose one of these locations that, the that last you're good you want to do is break a rule and get disqualified Correct. and have all this work you yeah. know done for nothing so yeah we're doing everything we can to cool. to make sure we're good well, we'll get into that as we as we go through today, which is your second to last day of pre-fishing. Today's our last. I'm taking tomorrow it? off. Okay. I've had so many days on the water. I'm just going to take tomorrow off to just kind of regroup and organize and get all cool. my things aligned. So. All right. Let's go do it. Rivers like these, <laughs> this is probably the, the most important tool for accomplishing what I want to accomplish, which is to cover a ton of water and be able to get both up and down river uh, in the current. And it's not uncommon, you know, 20, 25 miles uh, in a day. And like I said, without the Torquedo, like it, it definitely wouldn't be possible. Uh, the 1103 also has the power to to get up a lot of these rapids as well, which is uh, which is nice. And there's a lot of wood in this river, a lot of laydowns, and has no problem with the rock guard here from Innovative Sportsman to uh, hop over some of those those laydowns and the wood and really you know you can get wherever you need to go. <laughs> Let's hold, we gotta go like three, four miles. I don't wanna to touch any of this. All right, so I, the river we're on, I've been out here. I was out here uh, a few days ago. I uh, only had a brief amount of time to check it out. It was towards the end of the day. And, uh, ran down a few miles and caught a few fish and really wanna expand on that. 
uh, and see, you know, go down river a little bit farther and just see, uh, you know, if I continue to catch fish. I didn't really hit a dead area. The, the place where I stopped, it was still really productive. So if I can add a little bit more uh, to what I already found, I think that could really help. So river fishing, it seems like, you know, we, <laughs> we had river bassin for a number of years and it's gone. And it seems like the, those of us that really enjoy fishing the rivers really push the envelope in the other tournament series that aren't necessarily, you know, river-based series. Yeah, I think that's a little bit of what's going on is pushing the envelope to say, hey, let us, let us include rivers more. Give me a breakdown of the three different tournament series in terms of what, you know, what you can do in each. my motor rigged up is uh, I have a little cleat here with a rope on it and I can adjust the height rather than just having you know one height up and down I can put it exactly where I want it whenever I come up on these ripples here I'll run it just like that and I'll still be able to steer and control my boat which way I go but that way it's not banging into the rocks shallow operation yeah so you know I, I'd say KBF is the most lenient with their rules the most essentially river friendly uh, in which if there's obstacles that aren't man-made uh, such as lay downs or, or anything that's fallen you know into the river that's a temporary obstruction uh, you're allowed to get out and portage around uh, that obstruction uh, and you can also get out of your kayak uh, and, and fish actually on the bank you could beat your kayak you could walk, walk along the shore as long as you're within sight of your kayak so there, there's a difference between starting in the lake and and moving up into the lower portion of a river and actually just starting and ending a, a float trip per se it's it, it, you know you're when you're never in the river you know what i mean it's a it's an entirely it is a river it's connected to the lake yep. but you're never in the lake no. like what's the difference there like what what's the i guess the the rules on that uh, well, as long as you, you're able to float down to the lake, uh, then it's eligible water. Um, even if you don't. Even if you don't do it. But you got to make sure. So something we might have to check is, from what I hear, at the very mouth of this river, because uh, the lake level's so low, there's a shallow, shallow mud bar. It's really shallow. So we're gonna, you know, make sure to check. Because if that's if, if there's land, if there's something that's impassable that you can't float over, then everything upriver of there is then becomes off limits. So say there's a low head dam on, on a river connected to the lake that the tournament is held on. That you can't go over. Dam. A dam is a, is a permanent obstruction yeah. and you can only fish up to the dam. Once there's a dam, uh, even if it's, you know, some dams are pretty small and you could technically you know <laughs> you know if you want to do a little three four foot drop or something like that um then you know technically you could float down it but i'm pretty sure at die. that point yeah at that point you know that's the boundary L i don't think anybody's going to push that envelope nasty, but, yeah um they kill people all the time but. yeah all right so bass and hobie what, what are their rules uh, their rules, you from from what my understanding, they're pretty similar to from my understanding. I don't know if there's any little subtle differences, but you cannot get out of your kayak for any reason. And if there is any kind of uh, obstruction, such as a, a log or lay down or some brush or, or whatever, uh, then that's your boundary. If you can't uh, if you can't get down from there. So a little bit less freedom in, in how, you know, how much of a river you can fish with yeah, those two. Yeah, you can still fish rivers, but it's, yeah, there's a little bit of, uh, it's, you're a little more limited. Got it. A little spot. Found a school of little spots. Not what we're after. All right, so so yesterday I was I was fishing a different river. Uh, it was really clear water. We could see a lot of them, and uh, wasn't really a, too much of a sense of of trying to catch them. But I wanted to see what lures they were going to bite. And uh, so one thing I do a lot of times, especially with the top water, is I'll just take off the hooks, um, and that way you still have uh, the action. Probably looks even more natural. 
Talk to me about like you just had two fish hit and you just left them. Yeah, no, they shook it up. They felt small. They didn't feel like super heavy. They just pecked at it and I kind of felt them on there. And Describe the difference between what a small fish and a big fish just holding on to your jig. A uh, small fish is like tick, tick, and then you just kind of lift on it and you can like move them pretty easily. Yeah. A big fish is just going to be a thunk where you're just going to lift up and it's just heavy and then you're not even going to know that it's going to... Yeah, and if it's in a thick enough piece of wood and it's a big one, like almost better off like don't gotcha. set the hook uh if it's open i'll try to let him set the hook but if he starts running with it and he's gonna get me all tangled off and break me off at that point get hooked anyways and then you know right then i'm just gonna set the hook on him if it's but, in but a that really was heavy like piece three in a row that you just that just shook off yeah yep. one of them might have been all right i don't know a lot of times just by lifting it and feeling you could you can kind of get an idea how good they are just by the way they and bite that it. ups your odds of sticking them on tournament day yeah it's not just that fish that i'm worried about but it's when you release a pressure or release a fish that has been caught i feel like it sends out chemicals or something into the water that lets the rest of the fish know like hey something's up it alerts not just you know that fish obviously but the rest of the fish in the area too definitely get affected i agree 100 yeah. percent on the putting a but I don't know how long it lasts. Last, so like if you put them in, if you have an actively feeding school and you put it right back in there, it'll shut down that school. Yeah. But in terms of it, it shutting down a bite for two days later. Yeah, it will. Like think of about a bass boat, you know, or a kayak tournament where. Yeah, think about a kayak tournament where they have um, you know a lot of anglers fishing one area and, and uh, you know every day two or three people are going there and catching a fish catching a fish and uh, then all of a sudden tournament day comes around and you can't even get a bite right? so, so your prep work is all about finding somewhere that's good that no one else has been able to access yeah I mean a lot of that's that's my game plan this time and there's a, at least as little you know pressure as possible and the, the harder the access you know the less pressure spots probably gonna get go bad one so one of my favorite things to do in the fall when i am uh, especially when i'm fishing rivers is throw a belly weighted fluke when those temperatures start dropping uh, they start keying in on the bait fish and the thing about that belly weight in particular on the fluke is it's located farther back on the shank of the hook so if it was more nose you know if the weight was more towards the nose it's gonna fall. It's gonna fall down like this. But because it's pushed back farther on the hook, it's gonna fall more horizontal. And if you get the weight just right, you're gonna see that tail wag side to side like that as it's falling. Uh, that's what this one does here. Did you get one? Yeah. Uh, big swimmers. What's that one? It's probably yeah. This We got one on that belly weighted fluke. Right between the eyes. So your other jig is like a, you know, that's a minnow profile and then your other is for sure a craw yes. representation. Yep. All right, so we're heading back up river to where we launched and uh, Came across a couple other kayak anglers up here fishing. Uh, we're gonna give them their space and just kind of, you know, get up ahead of them a little ways. And uh, at the same time, I don't want them seeing what what we're catching them on. So uh, 
you know, I'm gonna put my baits kind of down low, a little out of range, and just kind of motor by, be friendly, say hi, but, uh, you know, we're actually, we're, uh, you know, doing pretty well, catching a few fish, so. Uh, don't wanna share that information. Yeah, I don't want them to see me fishing. I don't want them to have any idea of what they, you know, might be working. Got it. All right, we're done on the water for the day. Guys, tell me, why didn't we just do an A to B float trip? What is the point of doing, you know, individual spot hits instead of, you need to switch. You're uphill. Okay. You're uphill. <laughs> What's the point of doing the uh, single point access as opposed to a float trip? I think it's several reasons for, I mean, one, if you're in a tournament scenario, you may not have the ability to do a float trip, you know, based on who's around you. And the other one is... If you're solo? Yeah, for sure. Um, and but the you other guys one, aren't. And you guys chose to do it. True. What um, are the advantages of single point access? For us? The advantages of single point access is you don't have to shuttle vehicles. So in this tournament, we we need to get back by a certain time. So rather than worrying about shuttling vehicles, you can just end your day of fishing, throw your stuff in your truck, and you're out. Does it also That's help it. get to... I, I'm, I'm just thinking there's certain float trips that are like really long that you just can't do in a, in a tournament day. Yeah, a lot of times, yeah, you don't have like the distance between the two ramps is just way too far. Uh, so by doing single access, you have the ability to either go down river or up river, uh, you know, vice versa. You can either launch somewhere, go up river, come back down, or start down river, come back you can, up. You can pick your presentation a little better too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A it, lot of it, yeah, is yeah. just, like I said, a lot of these laydowns and trees and stuff, they're all pointed down, down current. And uh, if you're coming at them, you know, you want to be able to cast and run that bait parallel with those trees. Uh, and that's that's a big advantage of going down and fishing, you know, back up current. Okay. So what knowledge in, in pre-fishing did we gain today with with what we saw? I mean, how far down do you think we went? Four uh, miles? Yeah, four and a half, five. Yeah, probably a little. Yeah, five miles, I'd say. Okay. And, how does uh, that factor into your decision of what you're doing Day one, day two, like what, what new knowledge did you gain that, that helps you? Well, we expanded a little bit on what I already found, went another mile farther, and I'm glad we did because that's, that's where Cody got that big small mouth there. So, right. And there was a large concentration of fish there. And like in this river, it's, there seems to be like concentration, and then you'll kind of get to a little stretch where not so many, just a couple bites here and there, and then you'll run into another concentration. They're definitely grouped up, not necessarily in schools, but little quarter mile, maybe half mile, quarter mile stretches yeah. uh, where they're just higher concentrations of fish and finding those key areas and being able just to, to hop from one to the next is a lot more beneficial than just fishing your whole way through. Now, on other days of pre-fishing, you guys have done pretty good, I gather. Yeah. What are, what are your better catches in pre-fishing? There's been some big ones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, you get a couple twenty ones in one day. Yeah, I had a, a double. I had a double now. twenty and a half and an eighteen and a quarter on the same cast. Wow! Oh, um, I got twenty two inch smallmouth, yeah. which yeah, I forgot uh, about that one. I think it's one of my longest. I'm not yeah. sure. I've caught fatter, bigger, you know, heavier ones, but twenty two is about the biggest I've actually put on a board, anyways. It's very cool. So, mm -hmm. well, I wish you guys luck. I appreciate you letting me tag along and yeah. and tell your story of just you know. I guess it's your last day of pre fishing because you guys so. will. Yeah. Take it easy tomorrow and kind of catch your breath. Yeah, for sure. And, and we'll need rest. That will help you, uh, sleep, hopefully. Help you hit it hard on uh, on Wednesday. Yep, that's so, the plan. Looking forward to Appreciate it. Appreciate it, guys. Good All luck. Right. Thanks, Thank Jeff. Thank you. See you, dude.